When Tom Kelly said goodbye to his mum and dad on Saturday night and headed into the city for a fun evening with his girlfriend, nobody could have imagined the awful hours that lay ahead. The 18-year-old was walking down the street chatting on his mobile phone when a stranger king hit him for no reason. Tom Kelly never regained consciousness and the police still don't know who the killer was. The Kelly family can barely fathom the senseless act that stole their son's life and they've summoned the courage to share his story in the hope that the public can help expose the person responsible. Hayden Cooper met the family at their Barrel home today. I guess it's just that call that no parent ever thinks is ever, ever, ever going to happen to them, you know, and I still don't believe that it happened to us. We're still in this black cloud of fug, and um, I'm speaking for myself, not for Cathy, but I still don't have anger, and I know that I should have anger, and, but it's, I don't think we're at that stage yet. We're still in a period of disbelief, like it's a bad dream and we haven't woken up. At his family home in the southern highlands of New South Wales, Thomas Kelly's bedroom is empty and silent. His possessions are here, his photos and awards from 18 years of life. But he will never return. How hard was it for you to come home yesterday and walk into his bedroom? Um, it was very hard, actually. Um, I lay down on his bed for about three hours <clears throat> and just lay there with the light on, just, just looking at his his things in his bedroom and trying to feel him around me and surround myself with him. <clears throat> um, so it was difficult. Daddy, hold the stick with one hand. Thomas Kelly was a quiet, caring boy, the eldest of three children. He grew up in Barrel with his family and attended boarding school in Sydney. He, he was just a great kid. We just, we, we had, all of us have a lot of fun together. We, you know, we kick balls, we, we do what any normal family would do. We go surfing down the south coast. It was just um, a normal family. His life was just beginning. He had a new job as a cadet accountant, a new girlfriend, and on Saturday night he was invited to a birthday party for a colleague. It was to be held in Sydney's King's Cross. I rang him on Saturday afternoon because I knew he was going out that evening um, and um, I just, uh, he, I woke him up actually, he said, oh mum, I'm, I'm sleeping, I just want to be all fresh because I've got a big night tonight. And he said, um, I said, okay, I'll let you go. I said, just be careful. And he said, I love you mum. And that was the last thing I said to him. I knew it was at King's Cross because he told me before um, that his friends had hired a room up there for 20 of them to go up um, to celebrate his birthday. And um, I said, OK, if you're sure you want to go, that's fine, um, but please just be safe. And he said, no, definitely I will be. And um, again, the same thing with Cathy. He said, I love you. Seconds after this security footage was captured, the teenager was attacked. While walking hand in hand with his girlfriend, a stranger approached and unprovoked punched Thomas Kelly in the face. He hit the ground hard. Police are describing the random attack as a hideous act of violence. Don't expect that your son is going to die. You actually, there's a feeling that <clears throat> people don't tell you what's going to happen, although they'd made it clear that it was serious. We had no idea that he was literally on his death's bed at that stage. He, n he never regained consciousness at any time. The, the damage was completely irreversible. We didn't really understand that even at that time. And when we did go in to see him, of course, we were shocked. It was, he was lying there. Um, you know, obviously his, his head had, had a, a bandage there and his head had been shaved and where they'd taken his skull away and his face was, his face was pretty good, really. You know, there, it wasn't like, it didn't appear like he'd been punched. There was very little, blood or anything like that, and his body was completely unmarked. It became clear that there was no hope. His parents switched off his life support on Monday night. Now at home, the family is still in shock. 
have been talking with Stuart at all. I mean, is he try and get him to open up a little bit more to you? So that we... Seventeen-year-old Madeline Kelly is in her final year of school. Younger brother Stuart is fourteen. She insisted on speaking to us. Thomas will always be our older brother. We'll never, I'll never take his place of anything. But um, I'll definitely take care of Stuart for him because I know how close they were. They were probably closer than I was to Thomas and to Stuart. But um, definitely Stuart will miss his older brother because they always played PlayStation together. Whereas yelling at each other to win and stop cheating and things like that. She's realistic about the difficult road ahead. I don't think I'll be able to pick up a study folder for a very long time. I tried very hard. Sorry. With each day comes healing, but he'll never leave our hearts. And, and the sadness is that he'll never have a 21st birthday, he'll never be married, we won't be grandparents to his children, and that's what we've lo now lost. The Kelly family is so remarkably strong for one simple reason. They want to do everything they can to find their son's attacker, a man who is still on the run. If they could see what they have done, the result of what they have done, they, they must feel the compassion that everybody else is feeling and they must feel something that they would come forward or the people, somebody out there must know them and that they would actually come forward and put his name forward to the police because we can't have people like this in our society walking around aimlessly punching people. They came out intentionally to punch our son in the face. Now whether they intended to hurt him to the extent that they did is irrelevant and as far as I'm concerned he's been murdered. And I never thought that those words would ever be something that I would ever have to say. And the police said today if the person responsible has any soul, they'll turn themselves in.